playing women's hoops. Got a nice turnout here because it's education day with an 11 a.m. local time tip. So lots of local school kids in the building. That should add to the fun. And Amari Robinson, a future teacher, the education major beginning her senior campaign. I was always was excited to get out of class too, Pete. Not a bad place to spend out of class. Hannah Hank, the opening tip. It goes to Robinson. We're underway. Whitehorn not in the starting lineup in her first collegiate game, but we will see her enter early and play many minutes. Just our freshman for a Tiger team that comes off a campaign in 21 and 22. They finished 10 and 21, but got an ACC tourney win. And let the record show that Hannah Hank has the first bucket in this year for the Tigers. Gardner-Webb starting five, joining Williams as a preseason Big South Player of the Year in Alasia Smith. They also count on the woman with the ball, Kiari Kane, to get it inside and get it to players like Lakin Cox to finish up. That was a great little left-hand baby hook there uh, and a really good feed. Tiger team with new new Bradford returning. Bree Pepernian is a really... Going to be counted on the Elon transfer. Contact inside and the foul is called. And Perpignan is a player who will add some scoring to go along with Robinson and Whitehorn. Here's take a look at the foul that just happened moments ago. Stepped out there just a little bit. Pretty close call, though. Lakin Cox, among the most improved players, her head coach Alex Simmons says on this Gardner Webb roster, but her first personal. From Sumter, South Carolina, and that's a big body in there to, to go against Robinson. A couple of players in their starting lineup from the city in the Midlands, Sumter. Robinson in her senior year, but not her final season in a Clemson uniform. She's already announced she's going to return for a fifth year as a result of COVID next season. as She's finishing up her education degree. And we'll have two degrees when she leaves Clemson. Second on the team behind Alicia Washington in scoring a year ago with 11. 81% free throw shooter, able to knock down the second. And the Tigers up by one. Gardner-Webb, a team that likes to push the tempo. A season ago when they went 16 and 15 and lost in the Big South semifinals, they averaged just over 70 points a game. Kane hung up. Cox, a spin over Robinson. Battle for the rebound, and Hank has it for the Tigers. Another really good move there by Cox, but uh, didn't fall that time. Coach uh, talked with uh, Coach Butler. She was really excited about. You see the steal by Williams. Had nearly 70 a year ago, a turnover by the Tigers. That was a real issue for this Clemson team last season. Right, it really was. And she was excited about the two point guards that she has, the Juco transfer and then the transfer from the, uh, uh, Elon. Early attempt from outside. Smith can't get it to go. Alasia Smith last season hit 29% of his th per three-point attempts. And we'll get a foul away from the ball. They'll get an illegal screen on Robinson. That'll be her first. Talked with Coach Simmons uh, just before the game there, and she said that Smith was not recruited at all out of Science Hill High School in Tennessee. Jari Kane, one of the veteran returnees for this Gardner-Webb team. Again, 91% of their scoring coming back. That's not common, especially in today's game. Using the window, Alasia Smith averaged 14 and a half points a game last season, and Gardner-Webb moves in front. Hannah Hank driving inside. Offensive foul is called as Smith hit the deck. Great job there. Smith plays on the defensive end, obviously, too. That's good job defending on the dribble drive. Good job footwork. Got her hands straight up. Little push off there by Hannah Hanks. Tigers, two inside players in the starting lineup with a personal foul each. At the dead ball, substitutions. There's Ruby Whitehorn on the court for the first time as a Clemson Tiger. The list is so long of all the things she achieved as a fine player at Detroit's Edison High. Last touch by the Tigers, so Gardner-Webb will keep it. Elijah Douglas also on the floor there. That's the point guard from Western Nebraska Community College who was a JUCO All-American. Elijah Douglas, native of Omaha, expected to also add some pep to the Tigers and some better ball handling. Knocked away, and there's a steal. 
And a finish. And there's Douglas doing what she does. By the way, she scored over 1,000 points in her two-year career there at Western Nebraska. So, Other end, offensive foul is called. Kane got a little bit too aggressive. That'll be her first. Hannah Hank's one of the best at taking those charges. She will give her body up for that possession. Alicia Douglas, player who, with the junior college experience, brings some savvy. There's Whitehorn. Whitehorn just plays with an extra gear, we're told. Defended by Cox, trying to get it inside. A turnover. Foul is called, though, against Gardner-Webb. Apparently, Lauren Bevis hanging on to Robinson. That'll be her first. Bevis was undersized there, trying to guard Robinson on the switch. So she has to foul there to keep it. She had a lot of good help side there. Robinson off the feed. Nice finish. Amari uh, Robinson and now Smith with contact in the backcourt. Nunu Bradford and another turnover by Gardner-Webb. Coach is going to turn the heat up, looks like. Amanda Butler has always wanted to have her teams play with pressure defense. Second turnover for the Bulldogs, but they have not looked in sync offensively because the Tigers have been pounding them throughout. Robinson forcing it. And Cox coming away with the rebound. Amari made that shot a lot harder than it should have been. She was falling away, didn't have good balance. And a third turnover and another one against Kiari Smith Kane for Gardner Webb. Gardner Webb guided by Alex Simmons, maybe a familiar face for women's college basketball fans. She was a player for Pat Summit at Tennessee, now leading her team in a fifth season. Came to them after working as an assistant at Ole Miss. She's really done a nice job building this program. Her first recruit was Jessica Williams, player we featured in our open. And Williams has been the building block for what is a really good team, picked with high point to win the Big South Conference this year. Coach Simmons got a championship pedigree. She was a two-time state champion, state of Tennessee, at Chevyville High School, and then an AAU national champion. Nunu Bradford forcing the action. Tigers build the lead to five. Nunu's just more comfortable playing that two-guard position rather than the point. Kane defended by Douglas. Bevis, their best three-point shooter. Not that time. Coxo the rebound. And going for the steal, Bradford getting it. Douglas. There's Whitehorn. <laughs> Great teamwork. All started by the defensive play by Nunu Bradford. First bucket in her Clemson career for Ruby Whitehorn. And she's shooting 1,000% from the field. <laughs> Tigers on a run. Looking to build on a 7-0 advantage. Bradford leads the break. Robinson and the foul. Nunu Bradford showing some energy here in the early stages of her second season in a Clemson uniform. Really good defensive position. That has a good step through there by Nunu. And then here comes the steal on the other end. Generates a fast break basket. 39 takeaways a year ago. Ruby Whitehorn on the run out. Easy enough this college game <laughs> for the former Detroit Edison star. Amari Robinson, one of two so far from the line. We told you 81% a year ago to lead the Clemson team. Native of Douglasville, Georgia. Her dad played at Notre Dame. But she has really stepped up her leadership role this year, says her head coach, Amanda Butler. And her mom's in the Hall of Fame at Providence. That's right. Her mom played at Providence. And so Robinson will head to the bench, having knocked down a couple of free throws as Tigers run a 9-0 run to build the lead out to 13-4. You know, in Yang uh, replaces Robinson. I think she's got a bright future as well. Big body, nice block there by her. On cue. 
Cox didn't need to force it up. Battle inside Williams and Hank. And the arrow pointing to Gardner Webb. Inbound, knocked away. And that time off of Cox. So the Tigers forcing another turnover. That's going according to script a year ago. Clemson was able to force 17 a game. The trouble is they gave it up about that many times as well. Five turnovers make it six now on Gardner-Webb. Clemson looking to continue the run. Runners 10-0. Knocked away, out of bounds. It'll go. Tigers out of the gate playing some really good defense, some really good offense, and Ruby Whitehorn, the celebrated freshman, getting involved in the game plan early on. Taking it coast to coast per month. Head coaches in this game, both from the state of Tennessee. Alex Simmons for Gardner-Webb for Shelbyville. There's the pride of Mount Juliet, Tennessee, just east of Nashville. Amanda Butler, and she's in her fifth year guiding the Clemson team. Of course, great success in prior stops at Charlotte and Florida. And an NCAA ball club early on in her tenure with Clemson. She feels like she's got the chemistry to get back to that level. And she noted Gardner-Webb, Jim, and picked to winning their conference. It's an NCAA caliber team, and these are the kind of ball clubs she wants to be playing in non-conference. Whitehorn, that time off the dribble. Get it to the block, under control, good shot fake, and created that shot with a, a really good fake. Tigers continue the run, 12-0 now. In transition, travel called on Bevis. Turnovers mounting for this Gardner-Webb team. That's now seven. And they scored eight points off their first six turnovers. Now, Clemson scored eight points off those six turnovers. There were scoring droughts a year ago for Clemson. Tigers average just over 64 a game. Bevis nearly took that away. Opinion, and then on the wing, Douglas. She can shoot it too. I told you she scored over a thousand points in two years at Western Nebraska Community College. And there's just something about a left-hander shooting the ball, Pete. I know you're left-handed, but. <laughs> Got the soft touch. Hank hits the deck. Offensive foul is called. Another turnover. Jessica Williams. Picking up the personal. So tell me more about Douglas, the junior college transfer. Well, she was a junior college All-American, which says a lot to me. But I was very impressed with her ability to handle the ball. I watched her in practice the other day. But I'm also... Uh, Impressed the fact that she scored over a thousand points in those two years at Western Nebraska, and she was on the NJCAA uh, national tournament all tournament team as well. And Owen Yang just checked into the game, but she's called for the offensive foul in the lane. That's three in the opening quarter for this Clemson ball club. Amari Robinson checks back in. It was a short stay on the court for Inyang. She'll head to the bench. And Bradford also back out there. Tigers showing some full court pressure. Williams, 1,400 career points. She can do a lot of things. Plays much bigger than her 5'10 height. But for their conference, they do have some size with the 6'3". Smith and also Cox. Good job keeping the possession. Plenty of time in the shot clock to drive by Williams to try to end this Clemson scoring drought. And the foul will be called inside. On Bree Perpignan. And Perpignan picking up her first. You know, uh, that was a really good defensive possession by Bree Perpignan. And uh, uh, all the coaches in the, uh, Coach Butler told me, all the coaches in the Colonial Athletic Association where Elon plays, told me that she would just love Bree playing on her basketball team. Everybody loves Bree. Williams, who celebrated her 23rd birthday yesterday, it's one of two free throws to end the scoring drought. A little pressure by uh, Gardner-Webb here. They try to be a pressure defense. Clearing front court, Kiana Gaines just in for Clemson. Now Bradford out high, gives it back to Gaines. And Tigers will reset. Robinson backing in on Williams, goes underneath it. 
Kamari Robinson, seven points so far. A 20 to five advantage under three to play in the opening quarter. Michaela Elmore just checked in, knocks it out of bounds. Good help by Michaela Elmore. Here's the lob, backside is there. We want to go up and catch <laughs> that thing. Might have ball. been a foul. The ball was coming through our TV monitor at us. <laughs> Gardner Webb has not scored a field goal in nearly five minutes. Williams, their go-to player. Can't finish, good defense by Bradford. And the Bulldogs will keep it in their end. Elmore also helping defensively. She could be a very important player coming off the bench. Didn't have big numbers last year, but those should go up this season. I agree. From the corner, Kane. Bad miss. Robinson, I think, was surprised that the ball came to her right there. That's the hardest rebound to get sometimes. Kick in the corner. Nothing but net from downtown. Kiki Gaines from Columbus, Georgia. Her first bucket, Gaines, gives the Tigers an 18-point advantage as they grow their biggest lead of the game. Kane on the other end. No. Here come the Tigers. Perpignan pushing the pace. Gaines and one. Good eyes by Perpignan there, kicking ahead. Gaines is an athlete now. She gets out on this break. Watch her. Out in front of everybody, and she can jump out of the gym. Good elevation. As a team a year ago, the Tigers 71%. So far today, 3 of 4 from the line this opening quarter. Tigers pushing 30 points. That did not happen a season ago with any kind of consistency. Good job to keep the possession alive by Robinson. Bradford tries to feed, and they'll call the foul. They need to call the travel, Pete. Oh, actually a travel, so it'll be a turnover. Tigers extended their season a year ago with an ACC tourney win over Syracuse, and then hung tough down the stretch against Virginia Tech before falling. Now a foul will be called. Not a wise foul. Against Elmore. Not a smart foul, Kayla. I'm impressed with the pressure that Clemson's uh, putting on Gardner-Webb. Alasia Smith out of Johnson City, Tennessee, Science Hill High. And 65% 68% actually from the line a year ago. Her mom and dad were both student athletes at Carson Newman College in Jefferson City, Tennessee. And their daughter's the preseason player of the year in the Big South. You really could have flipped a coin between right. William Smith or Jessica Williams that we talked about in our open. Yeah, between them they averaged 30 points and 17 rebounds. We'll go from long range that time on the Perpignan Three try and a travel on the other end. So another turnover against Gardner Webb, this time on Smith. Alex Simmons, told you, played under Pat Summit, had a lot of influences in her career, not only the bit. late great Pat Summit, but she says her high school coach. She says her mom, who was not a coach, was a huge influence <laughs> on her in terms of what she's been like as a head coach. And Alex herself, a mother of two. And a foul against Gardner-Webb. You see Maddie Ott out high, defended by Smith, who picks up her second personal. Maddie Ott, one of those veterans who is a leader on this team. Second best on the Tigers in three-point shooting a year ago. She was 15 of 17 at the foul line. And her first make of this season. Texas sharpshooter. And we'll get a lane violation, so wave that off. Roy Jackson, our official, saying it was actually an inadvertent whistle. Uh, the free throw would have counted. 
Now, talking these over with Carla Fountain, our lead referee. And she's going to bring in Whitney Armstrong, the other official, and they're going to talk things over. By the way, we are the official replay monitor today, so if they have to go to a replay, they'll be coming over to our location instead of going a little bit down at our table. Actually, I think they're taking my monitor from me, Pete. I've I'm already offered them mine. I'm not happy about it. We can give it to them, and uh, <laughs> we can give them the split screen if they want it. And here they come, I do believe, or maybe not. Ball was in the air at the whistle. They're going to count the free throw. And, and as usual, Carla Fountain got it right. So there you go. So because the ball was in the air and the infraction was against Gardner Webb, give Matty out a couple of free throws. Tigers lead now 27 to 6. Still with a minute and a half to go in our opening quarter of play on the season opener for the 2022 and 23 campaign. Harry Kane, one of the two players in their starting lineup out of Sumter, South Carolina. Good job getting it across midcourt. Williams, versatile player, showing it, feeding inside. Reverse not going to go for Emma Caps. Put a whistle and a foul. Michaela Elmore was over the back, I believe. Quickly the second on the Tiger out of Fostoria, Ohio. Battling for the rebound. Camps a sophomore. Great scorer in high school out of Crossville, Tennessee. Stone Mountain High School. Beautiful part of the world, Pete. You ever been to Crossville, Tennessee? The thing I know about Crossville, Tennessee, it's right there on the line where the Eastern and Central time zone exactly right. is split. So probably a lot of confusion if you lived in the greater Crossville area in terms, especially when, when the clocks get changed back, too. More changed important ahead. is great, great golf courses around Crossville, Tennessee. And Caps, who scored better than 1,800 points in her high school career, makes the first two free throws of her sophomore season in college. Gardner Webb, though, still has gone a long time without a field goal. Amari Robinson looking to give it away. A couple of buckets for Whitehorn, but she commits the travel. That's a feed to six turnover for the Tigers here in the opening quarter. Nearly seven minutes without a field goal for Gardner Webb. Noted earlier, these programs each beginning in the mid 70s in the same season 75, 76, that era. 75 was the first year here. Drive inside Williams. Whitehorn rejected. Williams again, forcing, trying to get it around Hank. Here comes Whitehorn. You see the acceleration. Robinson. And collapsing inside. Good job defensively by Caps. Yeah, great double team right there. Bevis with Robinson defending. Good job with Robinson picking up Bevis on that three-point line. Little pull-up three-try. Won't go. Foul called. Think they're going to get Williams over the back. No, away from the ball. And Emma Caps will pick up the personal for GW. Skid Robinson were battling over on the back side there. For that rebound position. And we'll have free throws on the other end. By the way, when Clemson and Gardner Webb met previously, and Gardner Webb at the time was an NAIA program, and they were only about six or seven years in, maybe not even that many, into becoming a when they became a four-year school because when Artis Gilmore played there in men's basketball, they were a junior college in the late 60s. But uh, that game was a 136-39 to Clemson victory. And Alex Simmons does not want to see that kind of <laughs> prolific scoring out of the opposition against this edition of the Gardner-Webb women's team. I played golf with Artis Gilmore one time. His driver came up under my chin. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So Robinson hits the second free throw. A 28 to 8 advantage. Good opening quarter scoring for the Tigers senior. 
Eight points so far. She'll get a rest for the final 20 seconds of quarter number one. Bevis will try again from long range. Tigers with plenty of time to add and get to 30 at least in the opening quarter. Bradford, the drive over Kane. Williams on the rebound, under five to go. Williams, heaving to beat the buzzer, will miss. And a very impressive first 10 minutes of this season for the Clemson team. Tigers dominant on both ends of the court. Amanda Butler Ball Club with a 20-point advantage after one. In Italy, and for those of you who are bilingual in terms of knowing Italian, then that's an easy read for you. But Alicia Washington playing professionally after a great season a year ago for this Tiger Ball Club. And you see Ruby Whitehorn, the prize freshman, expected to pick up a lot of the scoring slack created with the void. Turnover there, kind of self-inflicted wound, if you will, for Clemson. And Gardner-Webb, which hasn't scored a field goal in quite a while on the game clock. will try to cut into this 20-point advantage. One of the better, I think, opening quarters to a season you'll find the Clemson team to have. Here's a drive inside by Cox. No doubt. And an offensive foul is called. And Lakin Cox, the starting post player for Gardner-Webb, picks up her second. Easy call. Once again, good help side defense there by Hannah Hank. That's her third charge today, I believe. Hannah Hank, just a scrappy player, one of the Clemson seniors, native of Australia. Seems like her body's been reshaped a little bit. She sure. looks a little leaner and meaner to me. See, Nunu Bradford playing on the wing. The addition of Douglas lets her now play the two, the steal. Williams got the feed, gives it back, and the finish by Michaela Funderburk, a junior out of Charlotte. First field goal in quite some time for Gardner-Webb. Drive inside Whitehorn, gets her own rebound. Ruby Whitehorn, fantastic scorer. And a great pass by Alasia Douglas. The two newcomers there that I think are going to be difference makers for Clemson. Bulldogs have opened 0 for 5 from three-point range. Bevis couldn't get it to go. Feed down low and Yang. And the foul will be called. Second on Caps. He'll head to the bench. I think you know Inyang is going to be a really good player for Clemson. They need that low post presence, the back to the basket player. I think she's really the only one on this basketball team that can give them that. Everybody else likes to face up and shoot the jumper. She's a power player. Inyang a year ago, 71%. Good touch for a post player. Uh, St. Cloud, Florida. Yeah, right there in the middle of the state near Orlando. First team All-State player in the Sunshine State is high school. A couple of free throws build the lead out to 22. You know, In Yang is capable of having a big night. She had 20 points last year against St. Mary's here. Career high for her. Take it away, Bradford. Forcing the action. Offensive foul is called. Great job with the steal. Got to be a little bit more under control. She was outnumbered in that situation. New New Bradford, aggressive player, came to Clemson from Jones Junior College. Kane works past the pressure. One of their better shooters is Funderburg, but it looks like Bradford got a, I should say Whitehorn, got a hand on it. Whitehorn accelerating. And eventually, Williams comes away with it. Williams a kick, but a little bit too wide for Kane. Good idea by Williams there. Kane just was not ready. Tough start in the ball game for Williams. Yet to get a field goal. Gardner Webb team, it'll be a factor in the Big South. I believe uh, High Point is a really good program in that league as well. Yep. Coast to coast that time. It won't go for, for Pinion. And 
It'll be another turnover, and the personal will be her second. Great position. That's a good call by the official, no doubt. You've got to step by them or elevate straight up over them. We have seen numerous offensive fouls here in the early I going. I know. Kane, Bradford stepped for step with her. And that's not easy. She is fast. Yeah, she was among the conference leaders with better than four assists a contest a year ago. Robinson picks up her second person. Here, Nyok just checked in for Gardner Webb. That was her with the ball. Williams drives inside, trying to go under Elmore. Rebound by Funderburg. Here's Kane. Lid remains on from outside for the Bulldogs. And now a foul called in the backcourt. They are a scrappy bunch, there's no doubt about that. First on Nyok. Here's a trap. Leisha Douglas hung up in the backcourt. Gets the timeout. Heady play as she saw New York and Kane closing in. Tigers a dominant start. Here in the opening half of action in Little John Coliseum, Amanda Butler and crew with a 22-point advantage. Good start to her senior season for that woman right there. Amari Robinson leads all scorers with eight points. A couple of personal fouls, so probably on the bench until the third quarter. And a turnover on the inbound by Matty Ott. But Robinson, one of the leaders on this team, came the pull-up. Boy, the scoring has been difficult for this Gardner-Webb team. Bradford nearly carried it. Douglas, Hank, the bullet inside. Good idea. She was trying to get it to Elmore, but Clemson gives it away again. Really good idea. Good high-low. Opportunity. It wasn't a good high-low, but it's a good high-low opportunity. Each team with a dozen turnovers. Yeah, the difference is Clemson scored 15 off their uh, 12 turnovers, and uh, Gardner-Webb's only scored five. It'll stay in the Bulldogs' end. Curry Kane, the other player in their starting lineup from Sumter to go along with Lake and Cox. Gardner Webb fell in a heartbreaker in their conference semifinal a year ago on a free throw against uh, made by Campbell with two seconds left and a one point loss. Bad pass. Nunu Bradford. Another point off turnover there. That was a 2-3 zone that Clemson was in against the, against the uh, out-of-bounds, the baseline out-of-bounds play. And obviously it did a good job. Tiger saw some zone in one of their preseason scrimmages. There's a drive inside. Not going to go down. Another turnover that that time. The basket. And then Williams able to get the bucket off the turnover after the little John miss. Williams able to get her first field goal of the game. Or rather, Smith getting her first field goal now. Smith stepping in front. She had 88 steals a year ago. Lost the handle. They'll reset. Out front, Bevis. Hank probably got a fingertip on that to disrupt it. It's pretty obvious from the scouting report. They're not going to let Bevis have it in easy. Douglas with a strong finish. He's trying to slow the pace down. Bevis will try again. Can't get the bounce. She's really had a tough start. Now 0 for 5 on three-pointers. A year ago, she shot 38%. One of the all-Big South 
conference players on this team. Ott kicks it to Hank. Great, great job there. Penetration by Bradford. Kick out for the, the three. She passed it up and kicked across to Hannah for the three. Hannah Hank helps Hudson build the lead to 39-12. Houston that set up Hank in the corner for that three. Yeah, no doubt about it. It was a great backdoor cut, backdoor pass by Nunu. And then the kick out to Hank, and uh, Hank is, she's a pretty solid three-point shooter for a big. Across midcourt, Lamia Littlejohn confronted and has it taken away. Really nice play by Perpignan. Reverse by Hank. Tigers again creating points off of Gardner-Webb turnover, 41 to 12. I see why Coach Butler was so pleased uh, with these two point guards, Pinon and uh, Douglas. Spin move. Williams can't get it to go, and the Tigers will get it back. Pinyang, really nice job. So, yep. for Pinyon, really someone who can score and distribute. This time, good find inside. And a good move on the reverse layup there by Hannah Hank for the finish. Whitehorn, her first game as a Tiger, the McDonald's All-American trying to get it inside, knocked away by Smith. Forced it. Patience, got a... Williams, another look. Bulldogs there. still have not hit a three-pointer in this game. They're 0 for 10 beyond the arc. Cole from three. That's a double staggered screen, wide open in the corner. And another one. Her first as a Clemson player, the former Elon star. Marie Perpignan giving Clemson a 32-point advantage. And finally, it goes down from the outside for the Bulldogs, Lauren Bevis. She's coming off a year where she averaged 13 and, uh, as a junior, hit nearly 40% of her threes. Now one of eight beyond the arc. And the Tigers give it up again. Have you ever seen a player say, yes, I walked? <laughs> Usually it has to include a stumble, and at that point all they can do is shrug their shoulders. So Gardner-Webb, rough start beyond the arc. They were 29% as a team a season ago. They're going to need to make some threes if they have any chance to get back in this one. Player with the last name of Little John with the ball, playing in Little John Coliseum. Give me a Little John giving it away to Bevis. I believe she's a transfer from Western Carolina in the Southern Conference. She is. And Bevis trying to heat up. That time hits a long two. The crossover for Pinion into the corner. And a bad miss that time by Kiana Gaines, who it's part of that run in the first half when Clemson jumped out of the 20-point advantage. Gardner-Webb, 1 of 11 beyond the arc, shooting just 19% overall compared to 73% shooting by Clemson in this opening half of play. Uh, not and again. Hannah Hank, a foul. And she would love to have back, obviously. So two on Hannah Hank, and you look down the list. And several Tigers. She's the fourth now with two personal fouls. Bevis gets it back from Williams. Bradford defends. Two three zone looks like. Little John, shot clock under 10. Bevis had a hand in her face. Good and rebound Perpignan by Elmore. Over to defend. Yeah, Elmore, good work inside. Perpignan pushing the tempo. Good job to get a hand on it by Smith, forcing the turnover. Bevis driving on Whitehorn, who picks up the personal. That was a pretty good defensive effort by Whitehorn, I thought, really. 
Really good low crossover dribble by Bevis and uh, Whitehorn was with a step for step. I guess just got her with a body. Ruby Whitehorn, her first personal in her collegiate career on the ACC newcomer list. And you've seen her talent on display here in the opening half. ACC newcomer watch list. Bevis was 85% on free throws a season ago. Actually homeschooled as a high schooler at a high point, North Carolina. Smooth stroke. Really good stroke. And she leads the Bulldogs team now with seven points. Tigers still, though, a commanding advantage. Under two and a half to go in the opening half of play. Robinson on the wing. Bradford can't get it to fall. Strong rebound inside by the Oak. Robinson came out to defend. Feed down low, ill-advised, another turnover. They continue to mount for the Bulldogs. They have 15. Pull-up jumper. Perpinion can't get it to fall. And out of bounds, back over to the Bulldogs. A little more patience by Nunu Bradford there instead of forcing him to pick it back out. Perpinion just did not fall far, but uh, better patience by Nunu instead of forcing the issue. Kane, dangerous pass, and, well, great job, Michaela Elmore a little to running, force the turnover. Yeah, a little run and jump defense there with Douglas and Nunu Bradford forced that long pass, and Elmore stepped in there and slapped it off her foot. Just a different level of speed than what the Bulldogs are used to seeing, and you just can't make that long of a pass, especially against a press. And you can't simulate it in practice either. Douglas can't finish the drive, battles for her own rebound. She and Yoke both hitting the deck, and the arrow will give it back to Gardner-Webb. Little bit's got some fight in her, you know it. Parker Webb, 16 and 15 a year ago. They were 13 and 5 in the Big South. Finished fifth in the regular season, but picked to win the conference this year. Ott defending Kane out high. Under a minute and a half to go before the intermission. Going to get a one-on-one -on -one right here with uh, Smith. Being guarded by a guard. Good feed, good finish. Bevis to Alasia Smith, the preseason conference player of the year. She now has five. I saw that one coming. She's a big, broad-shouldered, strong player inside. Robinson. Good step through, and she'll head to the line. Nyok picking up her second personal. A scrappy defender and rebounder in this game for Gardner-Webb. Good job there, but protecting the basketball with her body on that step through. Robinson four for six from the line in the game. She has eight points. So she She's led a the Tigers 81% a year ago. She's a veteran. She just so, seems so at ease out there this year, as, as a veteran should be. Seems to be enjoying herself. It's a fun game to play. Forty-six to twenty-one. Robinson will get a breather with those two fouls for the remainder of the half. I like that defense. Smith getting the attention of Bradford. Bevis drive to the basket, and the foul will be called. 
Leisure Smith averaged 14 and a half a game and led her team with better than nine rebounds a season ago. Matty Ott on the reach in. Before that shot there, Bevis did a really good job getting the ball out of that double team. I didn't ask Alex Simmons, the Gardner Webb head coach, who you see down to the right in your picture, if she had gotten over her alma mater's performance in Athens, Georgia over the weekend. <laughs> and, and you probably should. Yeah, I thought I'd <laughs> stay away from that topic. And a lane violation, and they'll wave off the second free throw. The Tigers will get it with 26.7 to go, leading by 24 points. Right now we have a little pressure here. Looks like a maybe a little diamond one one two one one or one two two. Bradford breaking it. Douglas. Tigers playing for the final shot. Malaysia Douglas. Elmore kicks it on the wing. Bradford to beat the buzzer. And that right there is a metaphor for the first 20 minutes of basketball in this 2022 and 23 campaign for the Clemson Tigers. New New Bradford knocking down her first three of the game. That's what we call and one more. And Bradford... 61 and 54 of her first five seasons at Gardner, first four seasons at Gardner Webb as she starts her fifth campaign. Obviously a tough start, but she's going to have a good team this year and one that is picked to bring home a conference championship. Trying to get Gardner Webb to a second NCAA tourney. The previous trip as a Division I program was in 2011. And the turnover on the travel by New New Bradford to start things out in the third quarter. She comes out in a zone, which uh, we didn't see the entire first half, so she comes out in the zone, creates a turnover immediately. Bulldogs enjoyed an early one-point lead, but the Tigers put together a quick 12-0 run. Gardner-Webb had a long nice. drought without a field goal in the opening half, but Layton Cox, her coach, saying that she has vastly improved we expect her to score more than the three a game that she did a year ago. She got a little early foul trouble. Bradford from that same side of the floor, just a different end. <laughs> With the long-range bomb to start the scoring for Clemson in the third quarter of play. Drive the basket, not going to fall for Smith. Bradford to Robinson. And an offensive foul is called as Bevis held her ground. Yeah, but I thought I thought Amari Robinson was pushed for behind. Third on Amari Robinson. She stays on the floor. Kiara Kane. Second team all big south. Here's Bevis from the outside. And that's why she's a first-teamer in her conference. She got off to a dreadful start from beyond the arc, but she's heated up, and Smith unable to execute the steal. Well, Gardner Webb's coming out and turning the tables on uh, Clemson. He's playing defense very well. Lauren Bevis hitting her second three-pointer of the game. She's now two for eight. Hank to Robinson. Reach and foul called on Cox. That'll be her third. Gardner Webb needs her in the game uh, to be competitive. She gives them the scoring presence down low. Quick pass. Nice find by Bradford. Eight points now for Ruby Whitehorn. Good job on the screen there by Amari Robinson. Boy, Kane, that's too easy. Little hesitation dribble there. That is too easy. First basket for the senior point guard out of Mobile, Alabama. Then they come out in the 1 2 2 full court press, three quarter court press. Oh, 
Whitehorn goes to work inside on Smith. She'll head to the line. She elevates pretty well, doesn't she? A gifted athlete. Yep. Out of a really good girls program at Detroit's Edison High School, they've produced a lot of talented players. Whitehorn, the latest. I think it's so cool that her mom <laughs> chartered a bus chartered and 30 bus. friends and family. First collegiate free throw attempt for Whitehorn and the touch is perfect. See some of the representatives from the travel party down from Detroit. They're Clemson up pretty good, aren't they? Yes, they did, and they have signature T-shirts for the occasion. Battle for the rebound, Douglas and Smith. Hank tried to save it, but is unable to. You see the group with those T-shirts and Ruby's picture on it, and they just realized that they're being <laughs> shown on the jumbotron overhead. Bevis knocked away, but Bradford couldn't save it. Bradford has got some quick hands now. She gets her hands on, fingers on lots of basketball. All right, here comes the pressure. Going to double the most likely receiver. Boy, inbound, dangerous play. Good job by Smith to get it back to her point guard. Kane kicks. Williams, feed, Cox. Good transition offense. Out of Gardner Webb. Elmore looked low, but she'll give it back to Douglas, who restores order. Lasia Douglas, native of Omaha, Nebraska. Clemson fans know all about that town. That won't go for Bradford. Offensive rebound, Whitehorn. The held ball, and it'll send it back the other way. In fact, the Tigers had a volleyball player from Omaha just a few years ago. But, of course, Clemson baseball has made many a trip there, and the men's basketball team was out there a few seasons back. You see Whitehorn battling inside. And I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see the women's basketball team with Elijah Douglas on the uh, roster. Make a trip out there so her family and friends sure. can see her play. Three Division One teams all in that area. There's two right there in Omaha and then University of Nebraska just down the road. Williams will try for three. Bulldogs, two of 14 beyond the arc. Douglas lost the handle, feeds Hank. Block inside. Yeah, good job by Jessica Williams. Williams, who had 36 of them a year ago. Kane. That would have been big to keep the energy going. Cox can't get the follow. Williams and Cox scrapping for the ball. So is Hank. Smith joins the fray. And Hank does a good job to get it to Elmore. And then the reach in foul is called. This is getting a little uh, physical, Pete. It's women's basketball. It's not supposed to be physical, you know? Jessica Williams picks up her second personal. Tigers lead was 27 at the half. Still a comfortable advantage. Robinson showing her versatility, handling the ball in the backcourt, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Pretty obvious there. There was initial contact. And that'll be the fourth on Amari Robinson. As Smith was defending her. See, the first time she raised yeah. the hand, there was no whistle, but then... I'm really impressed with uh, Alicia Smith. She's just... Uh... And we'll get a foul on Douglas with the aggressive contact on Kane. Her first was a Clemson Tiger. Good job by Kane of protecting the passing lane right there, stepping to meet the pass. Kane with the ball, Douglas defends. From out front, 
Won't go for Smith. Couldn't get her own rebound. He gets the numbers. Douglas pushing the pace. Bulldogs get back. Douglas. And eventually taken away by Alasia Smith. Smith and Douglas went at it there. Williams. And the foul. Let's see if they get Hank. And they will. And Hannah Hank will pick up the personal. And that'll be the third on the Tigers senior from Australia. Dubai Hank, you can see her with the body right there. Good help there by uh, Inno Inyang. It's just hard for a player to have patience knowing a, you have to depend upon that help side defender to stop the dribble penetration. You got a double team. If she don't foul, they've got a double team on the block. Williams, 65% last season on free throws. Two of three today. And she'll hold at four points in the game, well below the 16.1 she scored last season. Opinion got it out to Hank, who gets it to Whitehorn, suspending in the air before she let that one go. She just hung up there, same two. 57-32, Whitehorn in double figures, joining Bradford and Robinson. Ruby Whitehorn with 11 points in her college debut so far. Kane, a drive inside, strong move, backside rebound try, and Gardner-Webb will keep it. Hey, I think Cox is a very important part of this uh, Gardner-Webb team. Three perimeter players get all the attention because they score most of the points, but I think she's a very important part. And will continue to grow her role. <laughs> On the wing, Bevis. Whitehorn, such a long player. Good defender. Here's a drive inside and a finish by Alasia Smith. Preseason player of the year in her conference. So, Smith now has eight points. Wide open on the wing. Perpignan can't get it to fall. Whitehorn able to run it down. Hank, dangerous pass inside, taken away by Smith, who led her conference in steals a season ago with nearly 90. He's all over the place. Kane from the corner. Hits at that time, and quickly Alex Simmons, the Gardner-Webb head coach, calling the timeout. Kiara Kane makes her first three, and the Gardner-Webb Bulldogs, who trail by as many as 32, are within 20, but the Tigers have some kind of score in the freshman from Detroit. Ruby Whitehorn, poetry in motion. Announcement a few weeks ago, just uh, unfortunately knee issues preventing her from continuing her career in uniform. There she is on the bench, so... Uh, Set of eyes and ears to assist with head coach Amanda Butler and the staff, and obviously a sounding board for her Tiger teammates. Well, we certainly wish her the best, and obviously continuing on to her, toward her degree as well. I had a very similar situation in uh, my time here at Clemson. A young lady by the name of Angie Peters in her sophomore year as well. She had had uh, two surgeries when she came here, and then uh, had an ACL tear again. So. Uh, I wanted her to be able to have a good, healthy life, be able to have children and uh, do all the things that you want to do in your adult life. Three per pinion. The Elon transfer giving it away to Malaysia Douglas. Gaines, pull-up jumper. Really nice move off the dribble. Can't get it to fall. So Gardner-Webb, Allie Simmons called the timeout with her team getting within 20. May seem like a big deficit, but they have been miles away for most of this contest. The turnover, though. And actually, they have come back. They now have scored 21 points off Clemson's turnovers. They managed just 22 in the opening half of play. Another turnover, or at least another miss by the Tigers. And it feels like a turnover in some ways. Bulldogs try to get as close as they've been in a while. The pull-up. Williams can't get it to fall. She was a 45% shooter a year ago. Whitehorn, defender lefter. Bad move. 
Good move for the Tiger freshman. She's got 13. Smooth as a baby's butt. Tiger shows some pressure in the backcourt. Lead back out to 22. For Pinion on the defense of Bevis. Fiara Kane, one of the top point guards in the conference. Smith on the inside drive. It was Gaines hitting the deck, and Yang came away with it. I believe 30 got away with a the charge there. Smith got away. <laughs> Once again, good job handling the double team. Douglas leaves it short, gets it back. Inyang. And Whitehorn can't get the put back. And the Bulldogs will come away with it. A lot of bodies flying there, no whistle. Kane crossing over. And Perpignan will be called for the foul. Had too many uh, point blank shots down there not to come away with the basket. Free Perpignan picking up her third personal foul. Timeout on the court. Opener for the 22 23 campaign. As a team deep into the third quarter, chances are you've got plenty of flow. New New Bradford has been front and center of that for Clemson on both ends of the court. Not only did she make a great steal, but she had the presence of mind to get the outlet pass there, creating a layup. But that was a gimme basket. We'll take them, though. An impressive first half for the senior out of Mobile, Alabama. And it's continued on here in the second half. She capped off the second quarter with a buzzer-beating three. Bradford on her way to 10 points so far. And doing all kinds of good work. Four of seven from the field. And five rebounds. Work for a player listed at 5-9. Free throws for Kiari Kane, the senior point guard. This Gardner-Webb team's not going away. Even though they're down by 20, they are coming out with a lot of fight. I'm impressed at the beginning of this third quarter. They've got a winning mentality about them, coming off a winning season, picked to win their conference. A lot of experience. We told you 91% of their scoring returning this year. They expect to score more than the 70 a game from a season ago, but obviously off that pace here this afternoon. Back to a 20-point deficit. Now the foul out high by Tierney Ock. That'll be her third. Obviously the first game of the season, you don't have everything in. You don't have your total package, and Gardner-Webb's throwing a little press against them, and uh, Clemson's not handled it very well so far. Bradford trying to get to a dozen in scoring, but good defense by Kane. Cox brings it in the front court. Smith on the wing. Kane has an open three. Can't get it to fall, but Cox runs it down. Spinning inside over Elmore. Nice move. Couldn't get the bucket. Look at Bradford, but it's taken away by Smith. Niak. Contact. Good and job let's see. Davis. It'll be a charge. She was there. Feet outside the restricted area. Charge all the way. I could have made that call. Uh, Lazier Douglas. I wasn't <laughs> sure. I, I was glad I wasn't sure if uh, yeah. the defender was inside of the circle. Right. And that'll be a fourth foul, so Niak will head to the bench. Because Douglas. The trap. Going around Smith, but the trap comes from Bevis. Hank knocked away. Smith has it. Lasia Smith, preseason player of the year, rejected by Elmore. Fine Big South performer, but Elmore getting the best of her. Tigers run it. Bevis comes away. Nice move near midcourt. Coming up on a minute to play in the third quarter. Then they had Matty out wide open for the three in the corner. Bulldogs over their last four, make it over their last five. Douglas pushing the pace. And this time it's Douglas call for the charge. How many charges have we had in this game? Was it my job to charge the charges taken? I was gonna say, I think <laughs> you had that assignment. <laughs> I want to guess uh, nine. <laughs> Good job. 
holding uh, her ground that time by Bevis. It should have been a no call. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. Gardner Webb has gotten it down to 20 a couple of times, but has been unable to break through any further than that. Smith defended by Hank out high. Williams on the cross over. Hank hits the deck, and another charge is called. That's 10. I'm saying 10. <laughs> That'll be the third on Jessica Williams. And I know that's four that Hannah Hank has taken. Eighteen fouls for the Gardner Webb team. Three per pinion. Gains from the elbow. I don't think she was expecting the pass. Scrapping and winning the battle is Funderburg for Gardner Webb. Shot clock off. You see the time remaining here in the third. Cox knocked away. Good defense by Clemson. Whitehorn. Free throw line. And Cox the rebound. Held ball. And the arrow points Clemson's way with 5.3 remaining. Looks better to run some really good out of bounds plays from the baseline here. Let's see if we can draw one up. What's your call, coach? Can we get some three shooters in there? Have we seen Whitehorn take a three tonight? Does so happen? far in the game, she has not attempted one. Okay. Too easy for the Tigers. And Owen Yang on the inbound. Executed perfectly. And the Tigers' lead is 22 as we head to quarter number four. They're up by 27 at the break, looking for an opening win. Would suppose they'll stay and watch the men's game tonight. It's from over in the Darlington area. I'm not sure if he still lives over that way. Fourth quarter begins. Gardner Webb trying to make a little bit more of a game. They were down by 32 points in the first half. Give them credit for hanging in there. Bevis fires for three. Good rebound by Cox. They'll reset. Tigers are still out rebounded the Bulldogs by 10. And a nice job by Hannah Hank to force the turnover. Ott gets it ahead to Bradford. And it'll be another charge in the game and another foul on Nunu Bradford. I have, I have never seen a game with her with this many charges. Second foul on Bradford. Good job by Bevis. It was indeed. She's taken two or three charges tonight or this afternoon. Yari Kane. Bevis looks low for Cox. Cox really worked hard this summer, says her head coach, to improve her game. Can't get it off the glass on that attempt. She's worked really hard on some back-to-the-basket moves there. There's Whitehorn. I 15 you, points in her debut. Just quietly. It's a quiet 15 points. Seven of ten in the field. Feed for Bevis. Can't get the three. Beyond the arc. Bevis, two for 11. Whitehorn, not that time. Inyang with the finish. Carter Webb's going to use a timeout. Alex Simmons trying to keep her team in this game. Big deficit, though, for the Bulldogs. Tigers, much to do with them. College debut, 15 points so far for the standout freshman from Detroit. And only 21 minutes of play, I might add. So, uh, yeah. And once again, it's such a quiet 15 points. You know, I, I never dreamed she had that many points at this point until I looked at the stat sheet. Showing you a great play off the dribble. Pretty much just add water. Ruby Whitehorn's going to score you some points. And 7 of 12 from the field. And look at the rebound. She'll right. contribute that as well as she gets a breather. Well deserved. Out of the timeout. On Bulldogs from Boiling Springs, North Carolina, just over the North Carolina, South Carolina line. Cleveland County, NC. And a cross-court pass taken away by Hannah Hank. 
And then Smith battling. And basketball turned into soccer for a moment. And Gardner-Webb will get it back. Of course, Clemson men's soccer team, which at one point this year was number one. Mild surprise, I think, in the ACC tourney with their win over Duke last night. So they're back in the semis. They'll never count Coach Noonan and his Do not count them squad out. out ever. Bevis, under eight minutes to go here in our fourth quarter. Thought Bevis. about the three. Bevis has gone to the two. zone. Williams unable to save it. Bradford pushing the pace for the Tigers. Gaines, Ott. In Yang inside, but it's taken away. Here comes Jessica Williams. Kane, no look on the wing. Williams can't get the three to go. She was just a 16% shooter a year ago, but Bulldogs will keep it. Emma Inyang has missed a lot of time this summer and early fall with some illnesses. Uh, I talked with Donna Bullock, the trainer, and uh, she's not quite in playing shape yet. But she could be a very big factor at 6-3. No doubt. So her minutes are likely to increase. Tigers have spread the minutes around. Those who've gotten to the game have played between 13 and 24 minutes in the contest with uh, the only exception being Gaines, who's played just eight, but has made an impact in her eight minutes. And away from the ball on a legal screen. It'll go against Cox. That'll be her fourth. Just the first on the Bulldogs here in our fourth quarter. Each of these teams will face a Southern Conference opponent the next time out on their respective home court, says Ott. Fadeaway three try. Seventh rebound of the game for Whitehorn. She's now scored 17. Not a bad first outing for a young freshman. Gardner Webb Saturday's home against UNCG. Tigers on Thursday night will welcome the Wofford Terriers, which should be a factor inside of the SOCON. Cox forcing the action. Here comes Clemson. Looking to build the lead back out to at least 30. Hank from long range. Robinson battles for the rebound. Whitehorn inside. And screaming for a timeout was Smith, but it'll be a held ball instead. And Clemson will keep. Bree Perpignan. Elon transfer at Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Down the lane. Pretty nice touch. Pretty nice touch and a great move on the reverse dribble. Near midcourt, Little John struggles. Perpignan right there on her shoe tops. Little John gets the roll in Little John. So Lamaya Little John getting into the scoring column. He went right up and put that thing in Hannah Hank's face. <laughs> Boy, it looked like Perpignan had the open lane and said kicks in the corner. Backside rebound, Robinson. And she'll head back to the line. Backside rebound. She's very good at that. Robinson now with seven rebounds in the game. Tigers have controlled the glass. 46 to 28. Say 45 to 28, but an impressive showing. Clemson a year ago, rebounding wise, was minus one. 
Tigers average about 37 boards a game. Robinson now has 11 points. So you would suppose with the addition of Whitehorn right. and the continued growth of Robinson that the rebounding numbers will change significantly. They expect Michaela Elmore, Kiana Gaines to also be factors. N-O-N Yang. N-O-N Yang inside. Yep. 30-point advantage once again. Clemson led by as many as 32 in the opening half. Coaches talk about chemistry all the time. The chemistry on this team seems to be really good. And they'll keep working, keep getting better each day. That's what their goal is. Kayla Elmore picking up her third personal, so a new shot clock for Gardner-Webb. Amanda Butler has to be happy what she's seen. She will not like the fact she'll see 32 turnovers, but the pace of the game has kind of dictated that. And Gardner-Webb will force folks into a lot of turnovers. Last season, they forced nearly 19 a game. Elmore comes away with it. Somebody come back and help. Pass cleared to Elmore. Robinson in the corner. Ott. Amari Robinson battling with Smith for the rebound. It will go out of bounds to the Bulldogs. See the good scrappy play inside. There's two good players right there. Amari Robinson and Alicia Smith. Grace Pack checked in moments ago for Gardner-Webb. Freshman out of Midlothian, Virginia, seeing her first college action. She just inbounded. Kane on the wing for Williams. Gets the roll on the pull-up. Been a tough go for Jessica Williams. Top scorer for this Bulldogs team. She now has six. Tigers obviously identified a defensive game plan for her. Perpignan. Whitehorn. Strong move. But the rebound comes down to Smith. Kane lost the handle. Here's Ott. Ahead for Robinson. Nice pass by Matty Ott. That's not an easy pass to make. And she laid it up there. Amari did a great job not trying to catch the ball, but let it hit the floor and bounce high. That's... Robinson now has 14, averaged 11 a season ago. Williams, not really her shot based on the numbers last year. Perpignan driving inside on Kane, who knocked it away from her. Got a timeout on the court. Tigers, we told you about the mix of newcomers and veterans. Two of them get together right here. Matty Ott. Ahead to Amari Robinson on the finish. Thought we had a timeout upcoming. Play continues. Inside in Yang. Good find by Perpignan. And the foul be called. Too much right hand on that shot. You got to use your left hand from the left side. You know, in Yang. She's missed some really high percentage shots that she's going to have to make, and she will make as this season goes along. Funderburk will try from long range. And Yang had it taken away. Smith gave it right back. And then Smith, and let's see, Pack's able to save it. Smith has done that two or three times today. No look ahead, Funderburk. And a foul, no, actually the ball knocked away. And Yang came over aggressively. That really could have been a travel called on Funderburg. Right. You see the rejection. Funderburg will try from the left wing. 29% a year ago, Michaela Funderburg makes her first three for Gardner Webb. It has been a tough day, though, from long range. Just four of 25 on three pointers. Douglas with under three to play. And Owen Yang right back to Elmore, and Pack will be called for the personal. Oh, 
So it'll be free throws upcoming for Michaela Elmore. Limited opportunities a season ago when she was four or five. Her first trip of the ball game. Big question for this Clemson team. What would life after Delisha Washington be like? I think that's been answered right away with the play of Ruby Whitehorn. Right. And I think that Robinson returns with just the experience of a veteran and as reliable a scorer over really her first few years. She averaged about 11 as a freshman, about nine as a sophomore last season. 11 points a game. And Delisha played so much with the ball in her hand, so it's good to see Pinon and uh, Douglas being able to handle that ball handling role. Drive to the bucket. Little John can't get it to go. Pack battles inside and then knocked away. Tedessa Brown just checked in. Her first action, a freshman for Clemson out of Lansing, Michigan. Elmore! Just a 17% three-point shooter last season, but she makes her first attempt. Clemson builds its biggest lead of the game. On the other end. Thunderbird can't get the bounce. Tadesha Brown gets her first rebound as a Tiger. Monica Hip for Clemson. Gave it away on the wing, and it's taken away from Gaines. Bulldogs push it. Stop and pop in transition. Has to feel good for Emily Gillis to hit that hoop. We'll get a foul on Gardner-Webb. And that'll go against Thunderbird. Talking with Veronica Hill at the beginning of the game. She's been slowed a little by a stress fracture in her foot. These are things we don't necessarily know. Hip, the native of Poland. Malaysia Douglas, little runner from the free throw line. Good debut for her in a Clemson uniform. She now has nine. Pretty Tigers impressed. Led in scoring by the 17 of Whitehorn. Robinson with 14. And Bradford also in double figures with 10. She looks like she ought to be a fresh. Douglas looks like she ought to be a freshman yes. in high school. Here she is a junior in college. Beautiful look about her. And you see her on the reach in. She was trying to take it away from Amaya Littlejohn. Douglas, her day presumably done. Taylor Thompson checks into the game for the first time. Defending the inbound. Pack giving it back to Little John. Tried to score inside. Thunderbird. Little John. And she rattles it home. Amaya Littlejohn with the bucket. Her first three of the game. 79-51. Hip. Thompson. Now Elmore. Tigers content just to let the clock wind down. Ooh, strong moves of the bucket. <laughs> Kiki Gaines now with seven. Clemson Tigers will get another win against the Big South program and start this 2022 and 23 season off on the right foot. Thunderbird again from the outside. Kayla Thunderbird, a couple of late threes. She'll finish with eight points. Tigers will just dribble it out after hip clears midcourt. And the Clemson Tigers. Very impressive in this opening ball game. They were finally happy after a couple of scrimmages against other schools to play a real game. And Amanda Butler with her 51st win at Clemson and number 281 on what she calls team number 48 for her as a coach. And the Tigers win it 81 to 54. Had to be impressed with the effort from start to finish. No question. And, and once again, it was 